recording. Hello, I'm Sarah. Oops, ooh, hang on, let me just change that view a second. So we've got the right view going on. Um, pin. Let's try that again. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sarah Cordina, the CEO of Techmatics. And today we're going to be talking all about pipelines and customer journey with a very big announcement. The announcement is until yesterday, <laughs> the last couple of years, uh, the pipelines feature, the sales pipelines, the customer journey pipelines were only available in our pro plan. Well, Techmatics has always been the gift that keeps on giving and we have given big this week. We have just pumped the customer journey feature into everyone's accounts. Yes, at no extra cost, we have not increased your fees, we have just put a whole game-changing feature into everybody's Techmatics account. And today I'm gonna to be showing you what that feature does and why it is so powerful and why you're definitely gonna to wanna to put aside an hour or two today or this week to get this thing working for your business. Let's go in and have a little play and talk about customer journeys. Inside your Techmatics account, I've got this demo account up here. We have something here called the customer journey. What is a customer journey? A customer journey is basically a series of steps or stages that your customer or your leads walk through in the lifetime of being in your business. Now, there are a number of different ways to look at a customer journey. They can be the really big overview of your business. So you could have one customer journey overview that is related to everything that you sell, for example. Okay, so I've got an example here where I'm just going to move some of these, clear all these filters out for a second. Let's get rid of all of these filters. Um, we don't have anyone in here because this is a pretend account, <laughs> but basically um, this is an example of how we could use the customer journey to show and see every stage that our customers are at in everything they could possibly buy. Now, the other way of doing a customer journey is to pick one particular product or service and you have a whole customer journey of the stages somebody would walk through when they've bought that service or that product. Another way you could use customer journey is in, for example, you get really creative with this, you could use customer journeys for event management, right? You may actually have your different stages or your steps of planning and executing some kind of event or workshop or conference. It could be that you're running a project management through your customer journeys. For example, you might have, you know, the initial lead and contact, they've requested a quote, you've sent them a quote and think they're thinking about it. You know, now the project has commenced, the next stage is that the uh, there is in a review process for milestone one, right, you get the point, you can break down all of these different steps that a customer would take overall, or minute steps that would be taken in particular scenarios or in particular purchases. This gets really cool. Now, why do we want this? Why is this important? It's important to have pipelines and customer journeys because at a glance, you can go and see where every single person is at in your business. I'm going to zoom out a little bit on this. I can see, for instance, here that these people are all leads, i.e. they're contacts that have come into my database. Now, if we had assigned a value to these people, as in what financial value are they worth if they were going to go and buy something, this total amount here at the very top would show that we have, you know, $30,000 worth of leads sat in the lead stage. <laughs> um, if we had people who have purchased something here, I've got an example, maybe this is a mini workshop, you have X number of people who have purchased that workshop and you can literally see them sat in that stage. Basically, these cards are your people who are all listed under that stage of the journey. It shows you the value there, how much is sold under that particular product or service, and it shows all of the people in it. What an awesome way to be able to snapshot see exactly where your business is at, exactly where your walls and your blocks to sales are. Because if you have loads of people in this stage, 
but nobody's in the next buying thing. You know, maybe this is a cheaper workshop. Maybe this next one is, I don't know, a higher ticket coaching program. You've got tons of people sat in this section, but nobody in the higher ticket coaching program. Clearly we have a sales blockage here. This is going to tell you straight away, is it because you haven't sold to them and told them? Is it, you know, the marketing strategy you're using? What's going on? Why is nobody moving to the next stage or buying the next thing up in your line of offerings? It's very, very cool. Now, the other reason why this is important is because when people move between these stages, you can use workflows in the background to trigger off different series of actions. Series, we could totally go with that. So for instance, if somebody goes from being a lead to having purchased this particular product, so I'm gonna pick Chelsea here, and um, this can move automatically, by the way, by the, by the purchase actually taking place. Now we can have an automation that's fired purely because this customer has moved to this purchase stage. So now a whole other automation is being sent out to this person based on what it is that they've done or bought. Now, the third reason why you want to have pipelines and customer journeys turned on is because this is what makes your dashboard automatically update with your company statistics and figures. Let's talk about the dashboard. On your Techmatics account, in your dashboard here, you can actually customize what data is showing here and what information you have here. By the way, I'll show you that in just a second. But where it's showing you how many leads have you got, what value worth of leads do you have sat there in your account? What's your conversion rate for your products and services? Where are people sitting in each of the stages of your customer journey and sales process? You know, do you have any tasks, blah, blah, blah. All of this data is coming from your customer journey pipeline. So if you haven't set up a pipeline and you haven't got your automations behind the scenes, none of this data is going to update and you won't actually be able to see what your sales are, what your leads are and what your conversion rates are. So today I'm going to take you through a demonstration on how to create a basic overall pipeline for your business and how you can use automation, change or update those stage movements as people buy different products from you. Before I jump into that, I want to show you how you can customize your dashboard here. Um, you can, of course, change the, uh, the, the dates so that you can see what's going on over here. But you have this edit dashboard button on the top right hand corner of your screen. And this is where if you press the add widget button and these little visuals, these boxes of data and information here are called widgets. OK, so you can press add a widget and choose what kind of visual or data you like to show. As an example, on my account, I love to see how many contacts I've got as a little graph right on my front screen because I like to see if my email list is growing. So as an example, you could pick the line graph here and go to contacts and pick contact count. And we want, um, you know, you can choose all these different features, but I like to have um, a monthly view here, a monthly view, we can go to advanced settings and choose date range to be, I don't know, forever. Let's do a custom date range. And we're just going to change the, the year to, you know, for whenever it was you started your account, basically. So let's pretend we started this account in January 2022. And we want that date range to basically show to date. <laughs> you can see now it's added this contact count graph. We can drag this and move it right to the top of our dashboard and give you basically a customized view of what you want to see. So now every time I log into my Techmatics account, now I can see my contact list growth right from here. Isn't that cool? You can move all of these around by dragging and dropping as you go. Um, but basically you can add as many widgets as you want. All kinds of data can be stored and, and shared in here. I'm going to press save changes and bye bye. Now I have my contacts count. But of course, we need to get some workflows as workflows and some customer journeys created today. I'm going to go to my customer journey, first of all, to create my overall customer journey for my business. So let's click on customer journey. And you have a couple of different options up here. We have the pipeline itself 
These are all of your different kinds of sales pipelines you might have. So you might, like I say, have a pipeline for your overall business, a sales pipeline for a particular selling a particular service, for running an event, for the stages of project management. Let's just create one today um, for our overall business. Click on pipelines and then create a new pipeline top right. This is where you're going to list down all of the things that I could possibly buy from you. That's what I want you to do right now. So pipeline name, call it your customer journey. So, you know, I might call this um, Sarah's customer journey, okay? And I'm, I like to put overview because if I go and create other little pipelines for other individual products or services, I know that this is my big overall customer journey. So what are all the stages? Well, the first stage is always gonna be a lead. This means someone's joined your email list, but they haven't bought anything from you yet, but they are a potential customer. So we definitely always want this first stage showing inside our customer journey. So you might type in lead, you might prefer to use a different word, entirely up to you. <laughs> and then we're gonna press add another stage. What happens next? What could I buy from you first? Now, I personally like to order this from my cheapest stuff down to my most expensive stuff. So this might be, for instance, maybe the cheapest thing I've got. Maybe I've got an ebook or an e-guide. Okay. Um, maybe the next stage is a, uh, I don't know, it's a paid workshop that you could buy from me. Um, might be the next thing. Add a stage. Then maybe it's my online course. Add a stage. Maybe then it's a coaching program. Okay, uh, you can edit these by the way at any time. Uh, maybe then next I have a boot camp. Maybe I've got a membership academy. Membership academy. And then maybe I've got some kind of special done for you service. Okay, so you're going to sort of pop in every single thing that I can buy from you. You can move them up and down by clicking on these arrows. So if you want to move something up or something down, Click on those and we definitely want to turn on this feature with visible in funnel chart and visible in pie chart by turning that on we're saying we want these stats to show on our dashboard okay you can add as many stages as you want there is no limit to the number of stages you can add so if you sell millions of things no problem <laughs> you can pop them all in here and there's no right or wrong no rules you are the only person that could decide how you want to view your data and how much you want to break down the different stages in your customer journey okay so press save once you're happy as i said you can go back in here at any time and edit this at any time you like okay so if for instance i went oh no i've missed something you can just come over to the right hand side press on the edit pencil and you can go and add something in and move around your stages as you like all right but now there we've got it we've got sarah's customer journey overview awesome if i click back on the top menu here to the customer journey area please note a couple of things first of all in this drop down box here need to make sure that you have picked the right customer journey that you're looking at okay so if i click on sarah's customer journey overview here's the one we've just created if you're seeing funny things here press your drop down and check you're looking at the right pipeline the other thing you need to be aware of is that this filters button sometimes turns itself on with funny filters <laughs> so if you're not seeing all of your people or, or all of your sales here please always click on this filters button and um, delete any filters that are applied. This doesn't mean you're deleting things from your system. It means that you're just removing the search filtering that's happening. It might only be showing you um, a certain set of search categories of sales or not sailed or lost sales, whatever. So just always check that if you're seeing nothing here and you think something should be showing, just so you know. All right, so now we've created our customer journey. Let me just give you one more example of how else I use pipelines in a different kind of business, how you might use them too. I'm gonna add another one. Um, again, customer journey, pipelines, create a new pipeline. And I might call this one project management, okay? So a project management, Obviously, whatever project it is, give it a name, of course, but this is where or how you might also use this. So again, you're going to have a lead or an inquiry, right? Someone, maybe they filled in an inquiry form. Um, in fact, maybe you just have a lead to begin with. Then the next thing is they have filled in a quote request form. Okay, so quote request submitted. 
So if you are using the forms feature on Techmatics, for instance, for people to fill in to get a quote from you, that's going to be a stage in your project management, isn't it? Because they've filled in a quote request. Then you might have quote request sent. Then you might have um, in communication. So this is actually one of my actual project stages. In communication means we've sent them the quote request, but now pay, maybe they want to book an appointment to have a chat about it. Maybe there's just, you know, there's questions going back and forth. Basically, they're in that decision making stage. OK, so in communication, decision making. All right, it's happening. Then the next thing is, let's say they've accepted the project and now the project is going ahead. OK, so project accepted. Um, waiting contract signing, for instance, maybe you want to send them a service agreement, waiting for service agreement signature. That's going to be another stage they might move to. I'm not going to worry about my spelling here just for the sake of this. Um, then we have live projects. So maybe they've paid their deposit. We've got a live project that's now working. Then we've got, you can have milestones. So milestone one complete, um, milestone two, you get the point. You can add in as many of those as you want. Um, keep going and then of course you're going to have project completed and then you're going to have um, another stage where perhaps the project wasn't accepted the quote the quote was declined all right so you're going to have like declined or not not commenced not proceeded with people who didn't accept the quote did not accept the quote Ta -da! all right so they can see how you can use this staging in project management as well and this will now begin to help us create automated workflows behind the scenes to move people through all of these kinds of project um, management of these sales pipelines these customer journeys that you're creating you can be very very creative as to how you use these journeys and like i said earlier i was talking to somebody yesterday um explaining how i use them for doing event management okay and even if it's about you know running my own events running my own workshops you can move people through or just organize your tasks we hear as well okay we've now created our pipelines what happens next now we need to create workflows to go with our pipelines because people are only going to be put into these different stages automatically if we've got some kind of automatic trigger that's going to put them there we're going to use workflows to do that now the other way we can add people to pipelines or customer journeys is manually so if i was to for instance go to my little customer journey section here let's pretend i've just sold richard here my online course all right now I should have a workflow for when somebody buys an online course, <laughs> but if I haven't watched this training yet and don't yet have it set up, um, I could go in and press opportunity here and I could go in and add Richard to this journey. Um, so I've got pretend Peter here. Let's pretend that pretend Peter just bought my online course. I can add him here. The opportunity name means the name that shows on the contact card under this stage. So I always like the opportunity name to be the contact's full name. What pipeline do you want to add them to? We're gonna add them to Sarah's customer journey. Which stage are they in? So in this particular case, um, he's at the stage where he has purchased an online course and he is one, the sale is one because he's purchased something. And what was the course worth? I don't know, let's pretend it was a $197 course. We're gonna type in the value of that thing. And um, we can also add in, you know, if he belongs to a particular staff member, um, if anyone else needs to be following this contact record or noting any changes that happen, we can add in loads of other stuff here if we want to. Okay, I'm just gonna press create just to show you what happens if we do this manually. You can see there now that pretend Peter is inside our online course stage, but, we don't want to be doing this stuff manually. We're using Techmatics to automate. So let's automate this. We're going to set up an automation once, and then we will never have to manually put somebody into our stages ever again. So I'm going to do an example here where the stage of purchase is an online course. Let's go and create a workflow to make sure that in the future, anyone who buys that online course is going to end up in this sequence. All right.
Good. So first of all, we need to add the product to our platform. You know, if I'm going to track whether somebody's purchased something, I need to be selling it from here in the first place. So let's pretend it's an online course. We're going to go to courses and memberships. We're going to, um, we, can, we can add all of our products and upload them all in here, but you need to have what's called an offer, which is also known as a checkout in order for pretend Peter to have actually purchased this course. So I'm going to press create an offer and it was online course. It's an online course purchase. I don't know, let's call it something. Click on products. Let's see if I can pick one. I've, I've got a demo one here already. Um, da, da, da. Let's call it the leadership webinar. Oh, an astrology course. Let's sell the astrology course. Give me one second. Uh, Maria, yeah. would you mind just um, oh, sorry, opening sorry. the door, please? Sorry, I've got someone bing bonging on my doorbell. <laughs> um, so the let's call this the astrology online course just so we can track what we're doing here um we've got to pick the product that they've purchased and it's a one-time price and that course was 197 dollars we're going to press create and now we have a checkout for this course okay so here's our little checkout let's press published save and we can get the link let's preview it to show you what it looks like Obviously, you can make these look pretty. I'm not going to worry about doing the pretty looking today. We just need to have the checkout so that we can fire off an automation. So here's our astrology course. We could, of course, remove this banner. We can add images, text, everything else. But this is our checkout. This is our offer that's actually going to fire off a workflow. So now we've done that, let's go back into our Techmatics account. Now we're going to go into workflows, automated workflows on your main menu. From here, let this catch up with us. We're going to create a new workflow and press start from scratch. There's loads of menus here, recipes that you can use, but we're going to start from scratch. And now what we have to do is tell the system what's going to fire off this workflow, what triggers triggers off this workflow. It is the fact that somebody's purchased that course. OK, and it was the offer that is what is the action that's being picked up here. They've bought this thing. So you can type in offer here. Oh no, it's not, it's not offer access granted. Inside your triggers, you've got da, 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 in your courses section, because remember it was your courses section where we, uh, where is it? Where's a new student? New offer sign up, new sign up. Okay, there we go. Um, it was inside our courses, we created the offer to sell the course. So underneath the courses section, you have got a new sign up. Ding, that's our trigger because somebody new has signed up to this course. Now you can, um, oops, that is the right trigger, new sign up to astrology course. Okay, you can, this is your label, your name to yourself, your note to self. Now we have to tell the system what course was it? What product did they buy? What offer? What new thing have they actually signed up to? So we're going to press add a filter, select an offer. So this person literally clicked on an offer and the offer was the astrology course. Okay, there's the astrology online course. That's the product they purchased. Save trigger. So now we have set this up so that when somebody buys that particular astrology course, now what happens? We're going to press add. And now we want to make sure that they move to the course stage of our customer journey. So when we look at this, we can see all the people that are at that stage of having purchased an online course from us. So how do we do that? This is called an opportunity. Press create or update an opportunity. This is what moves people to those different stages in the pipeline based on whatever it is that they've purchased here. So we're going to just move them to the pipeline that was called Sarah's customer journey. So you're telling the system, we want to put them in this pipeline and the stage we now want them to sit at in our customer journey is the online course stage because now we know they've purchased an online course. Remember I said the opportunity name is the name that shows up on the card in that stage of the customer journey. And I like this to be the person's full name. So when I do look at the customer journey, I can just see everyone's full names on it. So here is the little custom value tag and you click on contact full name and that will pre-fill the person's full name on the card in that stage of the customer journey. 
Okay, the source means where did they come from or how did they find you? I'm gonna leave that blank for a moment. The lead value, this is the important part. What is this person worth? What have they spent to get to this stage of the journey? And in this case, it was a $197 course. So you're gonna type in $197 because that's how much that product is. And the status is won because they've actually purchased this, which means we've won the sale. All good, we're now going to press save. So what this will do now is when somebody buys the course, they are going to be added to that particular stage of the customer journey. Now, of course, because this is the workflow for an online course, Sarah's astrology course, everything you, show, you sell should have its own workflow because this workflow fires when somebody buys that thing from you, you are gonna to wanna to make sure that you've tagged them. Of course, you're gonna email them to say, thank you for buying the thing. Here's how you access it. Of course, you now need to update their stage in the sales process or your customer journey pipeline. You're also, you know, may wanna do other things. There's all kinds of things you can do. Like, let me give you a suggestion here of what the workflow for an online course might look like. I'll do another one in a minute for project management as well. Um, so as, aside from making sure they get put into the right stage of your customer journey, the next thing you might wanna do for example is give them a tag a tag is a label that they carry around so i'm going to put something like bought the astrology course okay so i'm going to create a tag here type in bought the astrology course add the new tag press save so now they buy the course they get moved to the has purchased the course stage in my customer journey now they've been tagged um, now we might want to, for instance, grant access to the course itself. So I'm going to press grant access. And what's the offer? It's the astrology course. Okay, so now we're granting access. So I'm going to do grant access to astrology course. This is your own note here. Press save. We also now are going to want to email them. So I'm going to press add and type in email and send them an email. You can either write that email in here in text form, or you might in your templates area have created a very beautiful welcome email that says, hi, Sarah, welcome to the astrology course, whatever you wanna put in there, okay? So I don't think I've got a template email in here yet, um, but that's how I pull up that template that I've made in the email builder. Or I could just go, you know, hi, press this little tag icon, and we go contact. First name. Oh, why can't I see this? It's because I've zoomed out. Hi, contact first name. Welcome to the astrology course. Da 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 da. Okay. Da -ding, da -ding, da -ding. And it's probably not going to let me save this because Sarah at test.com. Oh, that's got to go there. Sorry, I have to fill this in or it won't let me save it. <laughs> that's why. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, save. I need to put a subject, welcome to the course. Okay, cool, now it's let me save it. So you can see here, every product you sell. Now, if this was a, um, I don't know, a consulting service they'd purchased from you, the trigger might be different, right? The trigger might be they filled in a form. The trigger might be that they have filled in a checkout on a particular funnel page. The trigger might be that they've booked a call with you from your paid calendar appointments. All of these things are triggers, okay? So let's pretend inside our um, appointment, I think it's called event, is it called an appointment? Yeah, so they, the customer has booked an appointment. So here we go, the customer has booked an appointment and filters are, and it's gonna ask us what calendar, in the calendar called 60 minute consult booking, okay? So I've picked here, you have to obviously have these appointments that exist first, you have to go into a calendar and create these appointment types. Um, so they booked an appointment and it was the 60 minute appointment save trigger. So now I could have a completely different workflow that says, send an email. Hi contact. Thank you so much for booking a call with me, blah, blah, blah. Then you're moving them to the stage in your pipeline called the client has booked their onboarding call or the client has booked this appointment or the client has booked the project kickoff call. You see now how that enables us to then based on that action, move them to the different stages of the customer journey. See how that works. Now, project management, we can also use our, I'm gonna press save on this and go to a different column just so I don't completely freak you out and confuse this whole workflow here. 
Let's now add a couple of people to this particular course because I want to show you how this is going to now update our customer journey. I'm also going to show you a project management in just a second. So let's pretend I've just done a big marketing campaign for this course and a bunch of people have purchased um, the astrology course. Of course, this is a pretend account. It would all happen automatically when they purchase. So I'm just going to add a few people. Let's add virtual Vera, artificial Arthur, made up Margaret. Let's all get them to buy the course. <laughs> so can we do a bulk action to add people to courses here? Probably not, can we? I think I'm going to have to go into these guys manually. Let's go into virtual Vera and scroll down her contact record. And at the bottom of her contact record, we can now add her to the astrology online course. Okay, now that's going to fire off that workflow and it's going to pop her in the customer journey unless I didn't turn the workflow on. <laughs> I think I didn't turn it on, did I? Let's go back to workflows. Click on the little clock here. It's going to open up your most recent workflows. There's the Australia. Oh, I didn't turn it on. Look, that's a good idea. Let's remember to turn our workflows on, shall we? <laughs> Let's press publish and then it will work. Okay, I'm going to um, actually open up a duplicate. I'm going to duplicate this because I'm going to come back and show you something in a second. So I'm just going to go to contacts and I want to add a test person to this just to show you. Let's go back to virtual Vera. Let's pretend she's purchased a course, but I'm going to manually add her to it for the sake of this example. So let's take her out of the astrology course and add her back again now that I've turned my automation on. <laughs> all right, we don't need to press save at all. That should just now add her. If we go to the opportunities, it should in a second update. Is it gonna do that or not? Maybe it's because she didn't go through the offer and purchase. <gasps> That's annoying. Okay, so I'm gonna then manually just add her to the workflow called astrology course. It's probably, it's not, I can't pay to pay to join this course, which is why I can't do a real test, but I want to show you how they get added to the workflow. I'm going to just press. Oh, why can't I get this to show? Ah. Just trying to think how I do this without actually buying the course. <laughs> or how do I, maybe I can add a test person to this. Let's go to enrollment history. I want to add a test person to my workflow. Vera. Okay, I'm just going to, oh, she is, she has been put through it. Excellent. Okay, she's in. Sorry, it's happened. It has happened. Good. So if I click on stats view over here, you can actually see when people have gone through your workflow. So um, that will also show where people are sat at each stage of your journey. But let me just go to the workflows. The whole point of that is I wanted to show you what it looks like in the customer journey. Now we've started to add people. Virtual Vera is now in there. Okay, so anytime now, now we have that workflow turned on. When somebody buys that course, they're going to go through that flow and be added to this section here. Now, of course, we're going to repeat this for every product we have. If I have a coaching program for sale, I would need to make sure that I've created the offer, which is the checkout for people to buy. And then we create a workflow for that particular coaching program. Here's what I would do. I like to duplicate a workflow that I've already created instead of rebuilding that whole thing. What I would do is go to my workflow section, find the astrology course, click on the three dots, press duplicate workflow. But this isn't gonna be my astrology course. This is now gonna be my XYZ coaching program, okay? This is my big coaching program, press create. Now we've got our XYZ coaching program. What we're gonna change here is the trigger. So let's get rid of this um, trigger of them booking an appointment because this is only gonna fire off if somebody buys my coaching program. Click on your trigger and it's not gonna fire off when somebody buys the astrology course. It's gonna fire off when somebody buys the coaching program. There's my coaching program <laughs> example here. So new sign up to the XYZ coaching program, press save. And now we are moving them not to the online course stage of our customer journey. We're moving them to the stage called coaching program. And this wasn't $197 one. 
this was maybe a $1,500 coaching program. So we're going to update the price, press save, press save, da 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 da. I'm now going to just add um, a customer to this. So you can see here now, because we've now set a value of this particular sale, can you see now? how this is showing us how much money we've made in the online course sales. If I add somebody to the coaching program now, that number should say 1,500. If I add two people to my coaching program, or I've made two sales, that will actually update with $3,000 made. So I'm gonna just add a pretend person here again, manually, of course, because I can't buy a pretend thing. <laughs> Let's go into um, Bogus Bella over here. <laughs> and I'm going to just give Bogus Bella access to my coaching program. And this now should, oh, did I turn it on? Uh, Sarah, turn it on. <laughs> Press save. <laughs> Let's now go to Bogus Bella, scroll all the way down to offers, and we're going to give Bogus Bella access to our coaching program. Okay, and that should now slowly fire off um, all of the, uh, the workflows over there. So it will take a minute just to update. Let's go back into workflows over here. Automated workflow, oh, sorry, customer journey. Don't even know what I'm saying now. Ta-da, there's Bogus Bella. So Bogus Bella is now in that stage of the pipeline. And you can see here now, we've now won $1,500 worth of sales. And that will keep updating based on everyone being at that particular stage. So now, now look at our dashboard changes because now we've had some sales. Woo, okay. Um, we are now, it's now gonna start showing the, the stages that people are at, they've moved through, and um, our sales data and conversion rates will all now update here on this dashboard because we've now got an automated workflow for everything we sell. And each one of those workflows is actually moving or changing the stage of the customer journey or sales pipeline that they are in. I know this is a lot to take in. I know that this is really overwhelming, but with practice, with playing with this, you can get this to work. Now, I did say to you, I was gonna give you an example of project management here. Let's see if I've got a project management example to show you in this pretend account. Pretty sure I've made a pretend project management workflow in here before. Project management. No, I don't. All right, okay, let's go and make one from scratch. <laughs> Start from scratch. Now, this works quite well if, for instance, um, let's go back to the customer journey. I want to show you here what we're talking about for those that have just joined. Customer journey. Let's go to project management. Let's pretend you're selling a particular kind of service. Here's a customer journey example. They're a lead. We've sent a quote. They've, uh, they've requested a quote. We've sent the quote back. Uh, we're waiting for the project to then complete or move through its different milestone stages. Here's how you can use this for project management. So again, what's the trigger going to be? It might be if you're sending invoices manually that you might have to manually fire off this process, right? Because if I've invoiced somebody in a completely separate software like Xero, um, when they pay their deposit, I might have to now have literally an instruction whereby I manually add people to this workflow. And you do that by just going into their contact record and adding them to the workflow. It could be that they filled in a particular form, right? So maybe here, um, the trigger is they filled in a form. For example, when somebody buys one of my services, I give them an onboarding form. And on, in that onboarding form, they have to fill in all of their information, provide me of all the stuff I need to start their project, for instance. So the trigger for my project commenced workflow is that they filled in their onboarding form and they've submitted it. So we're just going to go into they've submitted the form. You know, you might call this the onboarding form. It's been filled in. Add a filter and it's going to say what form. The form is, now I haven't created an onboarding form in this pretend account, but we'd have to go and find that onboarding form. Um, inside here. So let's just pretend it's form 39 is the onboarding form. We're going to press save. Boom. Now, here's a bunch of things that could happen behind the scenes. Again, remember, this can be as creative as you like. One of the things we might do is do an internal notification. What's an internal notification? It's a note to yourself or to an employee that this project has started. So you might do just an email um, and you're going to choose who it's from, who it's to. And in this email, I might say, okay, this is going to go to a particular user. And that particular user might be Febby, for instance. And this email here will say, hi, Febby, just letting you know that somebody has purchased or submitted their onboarding form. So I'm going to say, you know, hi, Febby. 
um, this person, or you don't even need to say this person, you can actually put their name in. You go custom value contact full name. Contact full name has submitted their onboarding form for X, Y, and Z services. So now, whenever that onboarding form is filled in, you're going to press save. It's not going to let me save it because I haven't filled in all the information, annoyingly. Da 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 from email s at s.com. Okay. And subject project started. Okay. Save. So here we have they filled in the onboarding form. Now there's an internal notification. What else might happen? Well, obviously, we need to move them to the right stage in the pipeline, don't we? So we're going to go and press add an action, go to opportunities, create or update an opportunity. And we now need to move them to the stage in our project management pipeline. Project management pipeline that says the stage is hmm, live project live project and we know it's live because they filled in their onboarding form what's the opportunity name it is their contact full name that's the name that shows up on the card in the customer journey and um, what's their lead value i don't know this might have been a ten thousand dollar project right so it's going to be ten thousand dollars and we have won them because the project has started this is now a live project so you can see here now how you might use this for project management for X service um, project started or live project. In fact, always try and keep your words the same. <laughs> this was an automation for our live project stage. Okay. And of course, this can carry on. You might email the customer. You might send um, put a note. I like to put notes in the client record. So this could be another action. Add a note. This is a note that sits in the client's record in the client's notes section. So I would put here, the title is note, the project has started. Okay. And um, in here, I'm going to put custom value contact full name has submitted their onboarding form project has now a commenced. Okay, this will now save as a record as a note in their customer record we could email the client we can do heaps of other different things right we could send them a text we could send them a voice message saying thank you so much for filling in your thing there are tons and tons of other actions that you can add over here and you get the point now you could even go wait for this is how i like to do my my staff management right i like to pick the wait time and i might wait for you know two days maybe i've got um two day period where I give my my team a little bit of grace and then I might send another notification to a staff member I don't know a little notification saying has this project started yet okay so I could, I could and it would just be again hi Febby just checking in has this person's project begun yet two days ago it went live please update the client records with what's going on All right save now I don't have to follow up my staff. Wait, please check the fields or value inputs. Okay, it's, I'm not gonna. Um, contact full name. So do they want that? Is that what they want? I don't know why. Oh, duh. redirection page to the user. Haven't picked my particular user. Obviously, it's got to go to Febby. <laughs> um, okay, save. So now you can see here. You can use this to follow up with people, follow up your staff, follow up your customers. You can get as creative as you like with this. All right, so I'm gonna press save. Again, make sure you turn it on. This is a pretend account. <laughs> if I wanted to add somebody to this particular workflow, um, either the trigger might be the forms been filled in or we can manually add them. So let's pretend that one of these contacts has paid by an invoice or a bank transfer um, or something external from Techmatics. Um, let's say that Unreal Ursula has purchased this particular project or done for you service. I'm going to go into her account, scroll down. I am just going to manually add her to this particular workflow. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, add her to the project. Oh, I haven't pressed refresh on my page. Let me just press refresh because I was on a different tab. I was logged in on a different account. <laughs> So you need to refresh if you've built something new. 
And I want to show you now what happens to Ursula because I want to show you how her notes and everything will pop up. Oh, no, it won't because I think I didn't turn it on, did I? Hello. That's why, isn't it? Because I didn't turn that workflow on. I didn't turn it on again. <laughs> Automated workflows. <laughs> Go to my most recent, turn on the project management one, publish it, press save. All right. Now we can go back, we can go to our contacts. We're gonna get Unreal Ursula. Scroll down. I wanna add her to that particular workflow. Project management, there it is, project management. Great spelling on my part, press add. So now she has been added to the project management pipeline. You can see there now, inside her record, it's shown that she's moved to the project management stage. If I go to her notes over here, ba -ba, it says Unreal Ursula has submitted their onboarding form. Project has now commenced. Yay, how good is that? If I go into inbox, there should be, there we go. Uh, there's the notification to the team member. So it shows over here in Febby's account, project started. Hi, Febby. Unreal Ursula has submitted their onboarding form. Obviously, didn't make it pretty, but that's now fired off. And if I go to my customer journey and I change this to my project management view, scroll along to live projects, there's Unreal Ursula sitting in the live project stage of our pipeline. Go back to my dashboard and all of these stats will also update. See, now we've now had five sales from today's activity. <laughs> Boom. That, my dear friends, is how you can create and use pipelines and customer journeys for any kind of product, service, thing, event, activity that happens in your business at all, and how you can use your automated workflows to then make sure from that point onwards, everything you sell will update or change that customer's stage in the customer journeys or pipelines that you have, and how all of that put together then updates your stats dashboard to show you exactly where your business is at 24 hours a day. I hope you found that helpful. Please remember, if you need help at all on any of these things, we have 24 hour live chat support. This little purple bubble on the bottom right hand side of your screen, you click there, you press live chat. FYI, we have now removed the initial bot question just to see if it points because we were using it to point people to um, support documents. This now will take you straight to live chat. Okay, so um, click on that. Always ask here first because there are people on here 24 hours a day and it will save you having to wait for office hours for people to get through the support emails. But please also remember, we have the ability for you to hire our VAs, okay? You can hire our tech experts. For just $50 an hour, you can get on a call for an hour on Zoom with one of our tech experts and they will sit with you and help you do things, okay? That is paid because it's not general troubleshooting or support, it's to help you set up services. And for $50 to get this stuff set up, right? It's not a bad deal with this. We don't make any profit on this, guys. It literally covers staff wages, okay? So uh, to let you know, you do have all of that support available. Any questions? I'm just going to see uh, related to this, if there's any questions in our chat support. Um, da, 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 da. Oh gosh, there's lots of questions in here. Okay, sorry, I missed those. I was going for it. Da, 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 da. So I'm just reading through all the questions here. Is there any questions? It would be a lot quicker, I think, if somebody actually asked them. Does anyone want to jump in and just ask their question if there's something that I didn't answer? Hey, Sarah, it's Marie. Hello. Um, Hi. Hello. Um, you're getting, you know, the after shower barefoot me, um, <laughs> the, the, the Marie version of Sarah. Um, there was a couple of questions that people had about the opportunities and the, you know, when you have the amount of money that's there, it's nice to be able to follow along, but number one, it doesn't track anything for taxes or anything like that. That's not the purpose of it. Um, could you, um, from your marketing perspective, um, explain what the purpose of tracking opportunities, you know, you can drop and drag them different places and I'll let you go into all of that kind of thing. Um, I think that was the most um, that I saw. 
Thank you. Yeah, great. So um, obviously, Pipeline's customer journeys, Nortechmatics is a um, financial management software, right? You're still going to need accounting to manage, you know, your taxes and your tax returns and all that kind of stuff. This is for um, seeing an overall, overall snapshot of your sales process. Um, so again, if I just was to uh, click into my sales process over here, my customer journey over here for my overall Sarah's customer journey overview. This is really for looking and seeing where your operations are at a snapshot. You want to know if I've got in my account here, you know, if I've got 5,000 leads just sat here, this number is going to show me what value worth of money is just sat in my inbox, right? The potential sales that I could be making. Now, when I see my real one, because I always value people in my business at around, in my Sarah, sorry, in my Sarah Corden aside, I value the worth of a customer at about $1,000. Why? Because that most people join my membership and one year in my membership works out to be about $1,000, okay? So that I'm just giving you, you can value your customers however you want based on your business and what you sell and your average, you know, sale price per customer. But if you've got 30 people sat in your leads here, that's going to show me in mine because I valued them all at $1,000. I've got $30,000 potentially worth of sales sat in this stage of my pipeline. So from wearing my marketing hat, my operations hat, my sales hat, I'd be coming in here and going, well, how can I move them from lead into a sale? Can I do an email marketing campaign? Can I do a special offer? Can I reach out to them personally? Can I send them a text message? Can I pick up the phone and call them? You know, what is it that I can do to move them to one of these other stages? Again, if I've got a heap of people, um, you know, sat in the online course stage, but nobody who's joined my membership, again, I'm going to be looking at my sales process. Am I selling properly to them? How much money is sat there? So that's kind of one of the reasons why. Um, Richard, you've got your hand up. Yeah, hi, Sarah. A um, couple of things. Um, how can I record a sale from a different software into Techmatics so that I see the sales results in Techmatics? Um, there's a number of different ways that you could do that. We are an app in the Zapier and the Make Store. So you can, um, like, you know, do a when somebody purchases something in this software over here, something separate to Techmatics, then send in a tag or some kind of note into that client's record in Techmatics. So you can do zaps like that. Um, it, 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 it would depend what the software is and, and what you well, need. It's a tour book software, and I'm happy to, to put the, uh, the value in manually. But what support told me I had to create an invoice to do that, which I'd rather not do. A tag? Uh, an in tag. Create an invoice. No, you wouldn't need to create an invoice. You would just need to tag them and it would add them to a workflow or update, update the customer stage, the journey stage, based on the tag being added. So you could just go into Sarah's account and add a tag to her or manually just add her to workflow, for instance. Where do, where do I put the value in what field? It's in it's in the workflow itself. So let me show you um, what just for real life example. What's that particular service called that you're selling? Oh, it's a tour. Oh, it's the tours. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, as an example here, um, I just press recent. Um, I'm going to just clone the cut the coaching program duplicate, and I'm going to call this um, the Broom Tour because I know that you do beautiful tours up in uh, Western Australia there. The broom tour so if somebody you're selling a product you need to create a workflow for that product for that service um the trigger you might not have a trigger at all so i'm going to just delete this trigger completely because it you're you might be adding them manually to this workflow um, well, I've, I've got a workflow you know they come in uh, with an opt-in form um i'm sending them an email sequence and then they may purchase a, a tour as well yeah, cool. So let's just, I'm just showing you how you add the value amount. Okay. So okay, yeah. okay. this is simply here. Obviously, I would have a stage in my customer journey called the broom tour, right? That's going to be a product that I sell in my in my customer journey. Um, so I'd select here the broom tour. Obviously, I don't have one. So I'm just going to select boot camp for now. But the lead value, that's where you're putting the price of the broom tour. So let's pretend your broom tour is $3,000. I'm just going to pick a random number. That's where you're putting it. You press save. This workflow is now how your customer journey knows how much each of these people are worth or have paid to get to that stage. Okay. Okay. That's it. So now I press save. 
when you add somebody to the broom tour workflow, they're going to move to the broom tour stage at $3,000. Because this here, this action is what's telling the system, anyone who goes through here needs to be in this stage. And this is the cost of what they're worth, or what they've bought or what they've paid for this particular product. Make sense? Okay. So when the sale occurs, where do I record that? Yeah, so if you're if you're doing this sale completely outside of Techmatics, you're going to either have to create a zap or you're going to have to do it manually. Okay, so let's pretend like um, that Sarah has actually bought the broom tour. Um, you're going to go in, you're going to find Sarah. All right, so let's go find Sarah Cordner. Um, there she is, right? There's Sarah. You click on Sarah's record. And now you need to scroll down because you let's pretend I paid like a bank transfer, which obviously isn't connected to Techmatics. <laughs> You're going to scroll down to my record over here and simply add me to the workflow called Broom Tour. And I didn't turn it on again. <laughs> so, but here you're just going to add me to the workflow called Broom Tour. Press add. And now that's added Sarah to that Broom Tour workflow, which means it will show that I've paid. It's going to send me my welcome email. It's going to tag me. It's going to move me to the stage in your pipeline that says I've joined the broom tour and any other actions that you've added to that pipeline, sorry, to that workflow um, for when somebody buys the broom tour. Okay. Thank you for that. It's um, a lot, I know. Remember, you can hire some help if you want somebody to, to help you set it up. Yeah. All right. Um, another quick question. Um, I understood initially that we could send from different URLs. Yes, but yeah. with these new rules coming in, uh, maybe we can't. Um, oh, but, emails? Yes. No, you can only send emails from one domain URL. So you can have lots of domains in your attached to your funnels or your websites, and unlimited domains can be connected to your uh, websites and funnels. But you can only send from one email domain at the moment in Techmatics. This may change, <laughs> uh, but at the moment, that's uh, we only verify and set up the deliverability settings on one email service for, for you. Yeah, because with having different URLs, you want really want to send from different email addresses. Would no, so with Techmatics, the unlimited domains feature is only to create different websites and funnels under different domains. But under a one Techmatics account, you can only have one Stripe connected one PayPal connected and one email sending domain connected because that domain um, is the domain that's owned by the account. Mm. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah. Also, is there any other, are there any other questions that I didn't answer today that you would like me to quickly answer around the workflows and customer journeys? Okay, I haven't had any other questions come in there, so I am going to close today's session. It has been recorded. Oh, yes, Andrea. Uh, very quickly, it's a housekeeping matter. Um, this is the second week I got notification after the session started. And apparently I'm not the only one because somebody mentioned it's happening on, I'm in New York. Somebody yes, mentioned so it's happening in the US Pacific as well. Okay, so um, first of all, you can always, always see your uh, the Techmatics events that are taking place on the Techmatics Facebook group. So um, let me just give you a, a couple of things here to answer that question, because um, uh, it does actually impact your, your sending as well. Inside the Techmatics Facebook group and on the mm -hmm. Techmatics page, if you click on events, all right, all of the toolboxes are actually here. Now, if you mark yourself as going, you will receive a notification in your own time zone in your Facebook account that this event is now starting. So always go here and just put going, 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 going to all of these and you will then get notified by Facebook that this event's coming up in your time zone, you'll have the time. Put it in your calendar so you don't need to rely on an email notification. But the reason why some of them are delayed is because inside um, Techmatics or indeed, you know, most email service providers, um, the emails don't all go at exactly the same time, right? They don't just go, they, um, they go 
in a stream. So that's kind of what's happening. We will, we do actually need to make sure we send them out an hour earlier rather than literally two minutes before, because if we're sending it out two minutes before, some of them, you know, might not get that until five minutes later, for instance. That also will happen when you send emails as well. So please be aware of that. If you're doing like one big mass mail out, say the time that it's starting. So um, thank you for bringing that up. We will um, make note of that, but please also um, make sure that you've, you're putting them in your calendar and um, those events are listed to uh, make sure you guys know all the dates and times. So, <laughs> so you normally update the Facebook group on at 11 a.m. On, on the day of the session? I do, but you don't even need to worry about that. Yeah, we always do inside the discussion area. You'll see here, look, um, I've said we're going live in 10 minutes from now. However, if you go to events right here and you click mm -hmm. going, you are going to get a notification from Facebook events to say, you said you're going to this event and it's starting soon. All right. So that's also how you can just make sure you're keeping notified. The best thing to do is put an appointment in your calendar. Right. So that's uh, that's the best thing that you could be doing to keep make sure you don't miss these. Now this call is recorded. All the tech toolboxes are recorded. They go straight up onto YouTube immediately after. So again, if you are ever late or miss something, you can go to the YouTube channel or the Facebook group, because I'm streaming this live in the Facebook group as usual as well. So nobody ever misses out on anything. All right, I do have to call time today because uh, we've got lots of other things coming next. <laughs> but uh, amazing announcement for everybody is that now everyone has customer journeys and pipelines in their accounts. You can create unlimited customer journeys. And I really hope that you love this feature that we have gifted to everybody. It was previously only a pro plan feature. We've not increased increased your monthly fee to add on a very, very big deal to your standard plan. So I hope that that makes you very happy indeed. Have fun, enjoy the learning curve. This stuff takes a very long time to learn, but you can learn it. Be patient and enjoy the process. Happy checking. See you Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Good Thank you. Bye. Thank you.